Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Storytime with Uncle Swampass. Uh, I've been thinking over the last couple of days of um, just some crazy stories that happened while I was living in Vancouver. Not that I don't have crazy stories uh, from living in Fredericton here, um, but uh, yeah, Vancouver, some of the crazy stories are crazy. Um, let's begin. So when I moved to Vancouver, um, I was very fortunate to get hired by a company called Paradise Entertainment. Uh, their venue, their main home base of operations, was the Plaza of Nations. Uh, so if you look at downtown Vancouver at the old Expo 86 site, there's the big science center, weird ball, and then across the bay, there's this big glass building called Enterprise Hall. And that was the main venue uh, for that uh, for that company. Um, they did everything from conventions to weddings, concerts, um, yeah, you name it. It went it went on there. Uh, filming for movies, TV shows, uh, a lot happened at that site. And yeah, not just Enterprise Hall, but that whole area, Plaza of Nations, was their base of operations, and they had the contract for. Uh, Vancouver Indie, um, big things like that. Um, so that's what I got a job uh, there beginning at first. I was DJing weddings and uh, karaoke um, and also helping out with some of the production that was happening on site at the Plaza of Nations. Um, I think it was a month or two, probably closer to two months that I was there um, and uh, they pulled me aside and asked me if I'd like to uh, become uh, part of the management team um, and uh, they offered me the position of the on-site manager for the Plaza of Nations um, production coordinator um, my boss was Larry Darling who's actually from Moncton New Brunswick um, and uh, so I worked under him so you know whatever business or people would come in uh, and talk about what they wanted uh, as far as production, you know, whether they need stage, lights, speakers, tables, you know, all that stuff. We provided all that shit um, on site there. So so that's what I ended up doing. I uh, became the on-site manager for the Plaza of Nations. And um, I had a, like a, you know, I had like a staff jacket, like Paradise Entertainment, which I always thought kind of sounded like a, like a stripper company or something like that. But anyways, so... Uh, Mike and I had, uh, Mike Fields and I had a place in uh, New West, um, so the best way to get from New West uh, to work downtown Vancouver was the SkyTrain, uh, which I commuted on on a daily basis, like thousands and thousands of other people. One evening, a uh, very rainy evening in Vancouver in the fall, it was dark, um, I left work, uh, and uh, I had to walk, um, either I could walk to downtown and catch a SkyTrain station there, or I could go to the Main Street Science World station, which was just again kind of across the uh, the bay, the inlet uh, there. So um, I walked, <laughs> I walked to the uh, SkyTrain station. Uh, I was pretty much soaked by the time I got to the to the station. Um, uh, went up on the platform and uh, got into a car, and uh, off we went. So, geez, it's been a long time. What's after Science World? I can't remember, but the next station, as we we're coming into the station, um, and depending on which side you're on, you know, you're either facing, looking at the windows, you know, to the city, or you're on the other side looking towards, like, the SkyTrain stations as you pull in. Um, and as you're, as the train's going by, like this, you know, you're seeing all these people that are all waiting. For the train to stop and uh, you know people inside are waiting to get out um, I was uh, standing and I was back against a door uh, at the other side of the sky train car um, <clears throat> lots of people standing in front of me it was pretty busy um, it was you know the going home commute uh, rush hour kind of thing uh, as we came into the station um, and all these you know you see all these people uh, we could see and I imagine everybody else, I say we because there's a lot of people on the SkyTrain. Um, police officers were like lined, like to, to line up at every door uh, that the SkyTrain, when it opened, 
um, that there would be an officer or two that would be right there uh, when the when the doors opened. So we stopped. Uh, I noticed that there were police officers. The door opened. Uh, the cops stepped in and kind of looked around a little bit. And looked around, looked at me, looked around a little bit. And right before the doors closed, he pointed. You, could you please step out? Now I know, you know, there's a lot of things that I could do and, I, and that I probably did wrong in, in, in terms of, you know, uh, a police officer asking you to, to do things, you know, as far as, uh, you know, searching you and stuff like that. But uh, I uh, stepped out uh, and there were a lot of police officers on the platform. Um, and now they have me. So they pull me to the side um, and ask me, you know, for my identification, who I was and where I was coming from and all that kind of stuff. Um, I had a backpack with me, as I usually always do. I carry uh, lunch and tools for work and, and uh, you know, extra clothes, shirt, whatever. Um, and uh, so the police officer asked me uh, to set my bag down and to empty the contents uh, one by one, which is very similar to uh, one time, the very first Walkman that I bought in Fredericton here um, at Canadian Tire after I bought it uh, and walked out. Uh, a floor walker security guard uh, did this thing where he was like, you know, what's in your bag? You know, show me the contents. And I went to handle the bag and he's like, no, no, set it down and take out the contents one by one. So this is what I was doing again for this police officer on the uh, platform, soaking wet from the rain and cold. Um, and uh, emptied out my little backpack, my, you know, here's my fork for my lunch, and here's my little fucking plastic container for my lunch, and, you know, here's some cassette tapes for my Walkman, <laughs> kind of thing. And, um, you know, they, took, they called in my ID and all that shit, and, and I asked him, like, you know, what, what's going on? And he said that I fit the description to a T of uh, someone who had just robbed a jewelry store in downtown Vancouver uh, with that gunpoint. Um, so, yeah, I fit, like, I, I don't know, I probably look much what I was wearing now, you know, all dark clothes, you know, ball cap, um, and the backpack and all that stuff. So, apparently I fit the uh, ID of this, um, this uh, jewelry store robber. Um, Everything was cool. They figured that I was not the dude that robbed the jewelry store, and uh, I was told that I could go. Got back onto the Sky Train, was about to go. The doors were about to close again, and please step out again, sir. So I stepped out again, and this time there's like. So, th sorry, the first time I was uh, pulled out by a Sky Train officer. So the Sky Train have a police force. Uh, they do carry guns, or at least they did back in the day. Um, and, you know, essentially they're police officers um, and, you know, can arrest you and, and all that shit. Uh, so when I was questioned the first time, it was the Skytrain police. Sorry, kind of slipped my mind. It's been 25 plus years. Um, so when I get hauled out again, I look down and there's like eight or nine Vancouver police officers all coming, like, directly at me. And... I'm not too sure what they know, like, you know, all I think that was radioed was, you know, they had someone standing there, it didn't seem that they had the information that I was, you know, uh, checked and cleared kind of thing, um, you know, I gave them the company's uh, number and said, you know, you can call and ask them, you know, like, I just left like 15, 20 minutes ago, so uh, I had a good alibi and I don't rob anything. <laughs> let alone jewelry stores by gunpoint so the officers that showed up uh, I thought I was going to get an ass kick and like club like a baby seal right there um, but uh, that did not happen and they talked to the Skytrain uh, officer and uh, they let me go um, so yeah so that's uh, that's a story number one and as a bonus story I'll tell a Fredericton quick story here which kind of Kind of the same I, misidentification kind of thing. But the second day that I had moved back to Fredericton uh, in 2012, um, uh, I had uh, gone downtown, and um, uh, Sue Lawrence was a friend of mine, um, and I knew that she had her uh, place on uh, Queen Street. And uh, so I went down, and I was going to get my hair trimmed and my beard trimmed a little bit. Uh, I had a longer beard in 2012. Um, 
and uh, so I went to see her, but she said to come back in about an hour or so, and she could fit me in, so cool, I can kill an hour downtown, I hadn't, it's the second day that I was, you know, home kind of thing, um, so I walked down to, around downtown for a little bit, and uh, Things, which is no longer on uh, Regent Street, um, sadly they uh, shut down after legalization, she just couldn't uh, keep up with the competition, um, but they were still open, and Things had been around since the Fredericton Mall was still a mall, um, and I don't even know what year that, it discontinued being a mall and became like a plaza kind of thing, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so I, I go into things and, you know, out west there's a lot of dispensaries everywhere and as far as I could tell there was nothing like that in Fredericton and possibly New Brunswick so I just wanted to ask her some questions about, you know, dispensaries in the city, are there any, are there any close by kind of thing like that and just shoot the shit with her, uh, again I've been away for quite a long time so... I was just, you know, I was asking her with all of the paraphernalia because at that time there was a lot more, you know, marijuana paraphernalia than they used to sell in the Fredericton Mall when I was a kid. Um, <clears throat> so I asked her, you know, do you ever get any hassle from the police or anything like that? And she's like, oh, no, no. Never come in here. You know, not a problem kind of thing. So uh, I wrapped up talking to her and I was about to leave the store. And as I'm walking towards the exit, the door opens and like, I think four or five, I'm pretty sure it was five, at least five uh, Fredericton police officers come strutting through the door, and the one of the officers is holding the door, and I, you know, I let the other, or the, I let the officers walk in, they go by me, and as I'm about to walk out the door, the officer holding the door is like, uh, can I talk to you for a second? Short. You know, who are you, where are you from, what are you doing, all that kind of shit, um, I said, you know, I just um, was downtown waiting to get uh, hair done at uh, Sue Lawrence's and was just killing some time, was walking around. I just moved back yesterday, been away for 20 years. So it appeared, uh, or actually, no, he didn't tell me at, at the time um, what the dealio was, uh, who they were looking for, or anything like that. And um, he gave me 20 questions. Uh, I think he checked my ID, um, and that was it, you know. Kind of, I walked out. I went to Sue's and told her what happened, and she thought it was pretty <laughs> crazy. I, again, like, I, I don't care. I don't. I've done nothing wrong. I don't have a criminal record. Um, I've never been arrested. Uh, so, I, you know, giving the cops my ID is no problem. I don't. I don't fucking care. I don't have anything to hide. So, it wasn't a, a huge deal for me. But I was curious as to exactly what the fuck was going on. So after I was at Sue's, I went back to things. <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, just uh, to ask her, like, if they said what was going on, like, kind of thing. So, and they had. And apparently I fit the description. It's a long hair, or long ponytail, beard, uh, with a cane, which was very important because I walk with a cane, um, uh, wearing all dark clothes, and was accosting women and children on the green, and apparently was wearing a mask. Um, the woman said something about wearing a mask, and then that was backed up actually by a taxi driver later on, um, and I guess a, a taxi driver had actually, like, found this, or uh, taken this guy on as a fare. Um, I guess he got picked up at King's Place, and I, I, I'm, <clears throat> I think the way it went was that they were looking for this guy and actually put out like a, an EPB to the taxi companies to be on the lookout for this guy. And this guy, this taxi driver, picked him up, um, and he was arrested on the north side here uh, after he got dumped off in the cab. Um, and yeah, he'd been on the green accosting women and children with a mask on. Um, the only thing that I think that saved me from possibly being arrested was A, I didn't have a mask, which you guess you could just toss anywhere. Uh, but this guy was a lot more overweight than I was. Like, I guess he had quite the gut on him. So that was one of the things that uh, maybe saved me, um, that, you know, identified me as not being the perpetrator. Uh, yeah, so that was a little crazy story from Fredericton. Um, I've got some more great stories uh, from Vancouver. Uh, crazy sock guy and um, uh, a theft that happened at the shop. Um, lots of great stories from our shop because our 
Lindalum Makeup Effects, the, the company we worked for, um, the, our makeup effects shop wasn't uh, at the Bridge Studios, like on the same lot where they filmed X-Files. We had our own base of operations, um, and kind of like Fredericton, it's kind of weird. It's just like a like a south side and north side of Vancouver, lots of cities. But anyways, so uh, the North Shore had the uh, Bridge Studios, and we were on the, the south side and the downtown east side, and um, yeah. Lots of shady, shady stuff happened down there. And uh, we had uh, two-way glass, whatever it is. Like, you, you can't see in, but we can see out. So we saw a lot of shit go down. Um, and we'll have more on that. Stories from Uncle Swamp Ass. <laughs>